Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here, popping in. Now, one touch on something because uh, one thing I've been noticing, and ladies, you know, when the message is for the men, y'all be all for it now. Yes, tell them, preach. Now, when the message for you, keep that same energy. Keep that same energy. Because I'm sharing this with you from a brotherly perspective, not from somebody looking down on you, not from somebody who want to be with you or somebody who wants you to seek my approval, but from a brotherly perspective, because I'm on the outside looking in so I can see you when you can't see you. And the world really going to lie to you because the world don't care nothing about you. And so the world ain't got no need to tell you where you're going wrong. If you look in society, you'll see that the people who are going wrong, the world just let them go wrong because it's beneficial. Because the wronger you are, the more ignorant you are, the more money is made off of you. When you start to wise up, then you start to move differently. And so a lot of people want to keep you dumb. Because if you don't understand assets and liabilities, if you don't understand investing versus just spending, then the jeweler going to keep making money off of you. Way too much money. The labels, the, the, the clothing line is going to make way too much money off of you. All the vanity doctors that's doing your body and your lashes and everything going to make even way more money off of you. Until you come into who you are and you get settled with yourself that's when you do what you want to do because you want to do it and your influences are pure and you evaluate your influences because one thing i see going on right now is women really getting lost in the sauce and 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 it's certain you know it's certain demographics it's certain areas it's certain you know types but one thing I keep noticing is women with eyelashes that this long. And while they talking, the lash is just doing this. And it just, the lash is, you know, five, four, three, two, one. And then sometimes the lashes is, they, they part it down the middle. The lashes is like this, cause these here done fell out. And the lash is literally this long so you talking and hey how are you yes okay yeah uh-huh so yeah my name is you know Letitia and yes Keisha you know and it's like listen let me ask you this where have you seen any human being to ever live on the face of this earth with lashes that long. Where? The only place I see somebody with lashes like that is on a cartoon of a animal in the jungle or in the tropical forest. Stop letting these lash companies sell you these lashes that is four times the length of the most voluminous natural lashes in the world. It do not go together. It does not go together. Listen, I know you want to have what you do not have, but don't make a fool of yourself. It's like God don't make mistakes. God don't make mistakes. Make sure you're not letting society make you feel ugly to the point that you actually go get ugly trying to fit in with what society says is beautiful. That's a lie. Because society is going to push and promote vanity. Things that are vain that does not matter because it's about money. And then what you have to realize about the women, anytime I talk on this, women say, Tony, don't go affecting my business. Now you messing my business up. No, you still gonna have business but you need to stop lying to these women, telling them that these lashes that's three inches, four inches long is cute just because you get to charge extra for them and because you get to be an artist and she get to be your canvas, but you don't have to live with her results. And she walk around scaring people. People, oh my goodness. Wow. 
Bl blank again? Oh my. Is everything all right? You blinding other people because when you blank, one of them lashes come out like a arrow. The man trying to have a conversation with you, he can stab in the eye because your lashes keep coming out and like a dagger through the eye. The wind cat in the get caught in the wind heat. Now he wow, my goodness! I don't need no more lashes. Like, can you keep your lashes over there? Like, how do y'all put them in? Is this with glue? Like, come on now, why have them lashes so long? Listen, and then with the booty, like, listen, okay, listen. Do what you could do first. Do what you could do first. To the women that already went there, okay, all right, you did that, okay. You see a lot of women going through a whole lot of procedures to get that booty removed. If you contemplating getting a booty, before you do that, please, may I submit to you 100 squats a day. May I submit to you for your consideration, the Stairmaster, 45 minutes a day, three days out the week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. May I submit to you lunges, holding a dumbbell. May I submit to you body weight squats in your house. May I submit that to you for your consideration before you go to Dr. Such and Such, who does not care about you, who wanna explore his new material, to see how it reacts with the human body. If you catch a disease, he don't care. When he put you under, you signed a piece of paper that when you go under, if you don't come back up, he's not liable. You signed a piece of paper. Dr. Columbia, Dr. Miami, Dr. New York, Dr. New Jersey do not care about you. What they want, that fatty, that fettuccine, to buy his new Porsche, his new G-Wagon, his new McLaren. So, hey, you feel insecure about your booty that God gave you that you have not taken the time to go to the gym and put the work in in the gym, but you just want to come on in here to me? Come on in here. Come on in here. Come right on in. Come right on in. Listen, go to Dr. Jim before you go to Dr. Miami. All right? Listen to me, ain't nobody telling y'all this. And then some women know it, some women don't. And, and and then some women say, oh, I'm doing this for myself. I'm doing it. No, you're not. Because if we only live for ourselves, everybody be walk, walk around naked. I got this shirt on for you, not for me. I don't want to put no shirt on. I got this hat on for you, not for me. I wouldn't have this hat on if my hat, because my hair ain't cut. I ain't got my hair line on. So I wouldn't have this hat on if it wasn't for you. You see what I'm saying? I painted this wall for you, not for me. We don't just live for ourselves. Other people's thoughts of us matter. And we got to be honest about that. Someone, oh, I don't do nothing for the approval of a man. I don't do nothing for a man. Yes, you do. Because anytime a man say, listen, don't go get all that fake booty put in there. Don't go get all this right here plastic or silicone put in you. Don't go, you know, you ain't got to go do that. God already made you perfect for you. You and for whoever for you. The job for you. The, the position for you. The relationship for you. God already made you for your seat at the table. You go get all that booty put in now you can't even fit in the seat that god got for you at the table you trying to sit down uh, 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 excuse me. do y'all have another chair because i just came back from dr miami and the chair that have my name on it uh it just i can't uh, it just do y'all have another chair can i have brenda chair no that's brenda chair that's how brenda built that's how Brenda built. She that God made her with hips like that. So we got that chair over there for Brenda. This your chair. Did nobody tell you to go to Dr. Miami? 
You could have went to Dr. Jim. You could have lifted your glute muscle. It would have gave it a little bit more rotund, but you still would have fit in your chair because God already factored that in your story that you was going to have a new year, new me resolution and that you were going to go to the gym. So God made your chair at your seat at the table to fit you after the gym, after Dr. Jim, but not after Dr. Miami, Dr. Columbia. So, so unfortunately, your we ain't got nothing for you. So you done lost your seat at the table or you just gonna have to squeeze in there and be in pain. Now you mess around and bust a capillary. I don't know if we're gonna be able to save you. You see what I'm saying? So listen, you have to love you. Like sometimes women get stuff confused. I just had to put a lady in her place a little bit ago. I'm gonna tell you, I agree with some of your advice, but a woman should get better for themselves, not for a man. Duh, you ain't never heard me tell no woman to go get uh, better herself for the approval of a man. You doing it for you. But when you do that for you, yes, it's going to benefit you in the dating world, in the attraction. But where the opinion of a man matters, the opinion of a man does matter if you want a man. The opinion of a man don't matter if you don't want no man. If you want to be Apostle Paulina, Apostle Paul was single. If you want to be Apostle Paulina, then the opinion of a man don't matter. But don't say the opinion of a man don't matter if you want a man. Because he have to choose you just like you got to choose him. So guess what? Your opinion of a man matters. If he say, I don't care about what no woman think. Well, he's a, he'll be a fool if he want a woman and he want to be married. Let me give you an example. My wife opinion matters like right now beards are in style like the thick beards are in style my wife don't like beards so i'm not gonna grow one of them long beards because my wife don't like it and that's who i want to be appealing to that's who i want to please when i met my wife i shaved my legs i shaved my legs because i played football and everybody with hairy legs who played sport was shaving their legs to look more defined Look more athletic so you could see the cuts in your muscles more. Had nothing to do with being liking men or being soft or nothing like that. We played the toughest sport in the world, football, getting our head bashed in, but yet we still shave so that we could have defined muscles. Swimmers shave so that because they think it's going to make them a little faster in the water. Baseball players shave their arms so they could have them cuts in their arms. It ain't helping them swing better. It just they want to look more muscular and defined. When I met my wife, she said, I'm really not into the men shaving legs thing. Like, I think if a man leg grow hair, that's manly. And, hey, I agree. I just was adapting to society. I was doing what other people was doing. I was doing what the pro athletes was doing. I'm a college athlete. I'm doing what I see the pros doing, you know. And so, but I agree. i much rather not have to shave these legs because that's maintenance. My wife said, I don't like really, I don't really care for them shady legs. Why you shave your leg? Because she was like, I really don't want no man who legs smoother than mine, nor do I want to be getting pricked in the bed when your hair's growing back. I said, hey, I agree. I let my hair grow out my, hair, my legs. I look like Teen Wolf. You hear me? And I remember my cousin, my first cousin, he was shaving, you know, his arms or his legs or something. Like that. He said, I'm not going to be looking like no wolf. So you can do what you want to do. Y'all can do what you want. I ain't finna be looking like no wolf. And so that influenced me. You see what I'm saying? You have to evaluate them influences. So what's happening is a lot of women, they see this woman with this huge, very large booty. And then they see men gawking over her and liking her picture. And she keep her a man. And so the woman said, oh, well, I must need me a booty. But going to the gym, oh, that hurt. I don't want to be sore. I can't even walk the next day. That's too much work. I could just take this tax return and go lay on the table. See what I mean? We want shortcuts. When you take shortcuts, you get cut short. And then you'll see a lot of people go get veneers. It's one out of a hundred veneer jobs that's going to fit your face. One out of a hundred. Most people, they go get veneers and then, uh, 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 hey, how you doing? Hey, hey. And you like, uh, is everything all right? 
Do you want my toothbrush too? Yeah, I don't need no toothbrush. Here you go. Cause the size, I was just cause the size of them look like you needed two toothbrush. You need some more. Um, so now it's Christmas. Everybody buying you fluoride and mouthwash and toothbrush and toothpaste. Cause you done went and got them veneers and them veneer you around here. It, hey, how you doing? It's like think about it. Think about it. Take some time and just look at the people that you see go get veneer. Come on, like take some time. Now, some of y'all got veneers and it, it look okay. Some of you got veneer, it look okay. You see what I'm saying? But society making us feel like, oh, your teeth ain't white enough. Your teeth ain't nice enough. You know what I did? I went and got braces. And the reason why I went and got braces, look, I can afford veneers. But I went and got braces, and it took me, yeah, two and a half, three years with braces, walking around what they call railroad track mouth. Okay, I'll be that. Yeah, I'm biting my lip. Yeah, I'm cutting the inside of my lip. Yeah, I get food stuck in my in my braces. Yeah, I'm 32 years old, walking around with braces. Could barely smile. Teeth getting stuck on my braces. Can't even smile. <laughs> smile like this. But listen, yeah, all right, I'll be that. But you know what? I'm going to have a set of teeth. That God put in my mouth. I'm going to have a set of teeth that God put Now listen. What veneers is for is if your teeth, if you have a um, situation where your teeth fall out. You have a situation where your teeth, they rot. You eat candy or whatever and they rot. That's what veneers is for. See, cosmetic stuff is for corrective. It's for corrective. It's not for vanity. It ain't for vanity now. To where you going and you altering your whole look and your whole body. Now, some of y'all have already done this. God bless you. We praying for you. I pray everything goes well with it. You got it done before you heard this message of affirmation that told you you already beautiful. You already handsome. You already what God has determined for you to be. And you are good enough. You is strong you is smart you is important you got it done before you got to this message i'm not knocking you i totally understand i get it i get the peer pressure and the the, the, the bullying and, and and the stuff people put on you the way people make you feel less down i under less than i understand it what this is for is for the people who hanging in the balance and you just keep looking back at it and you trying to wonder, do I need to go to Dr. Miami or not? No. Go to Dr. Jim. Go to Dr. Jim. G-Y-M, not J-I-M now, because it's a Dr. Jim on here. He's like, hey, J-I-M, Tony told you to come to me. Here I am. No, Dr. Jim, G-Y-M. Okay, squats, lunges, okay, step master, or whatever else is a glute builder. Go to that first right there, okay? Because I've seen it with my wife. When I met my wife, she didn't have the shape of booty she wanted or that was, you know, praised. But she went through a workout season with this little fitness team and they did Stairmaster like it was going out of style. They did lunges like they was going out of style. They did squats like it was going out of style. Do you hear me? My wife booty lifted. My wife booty lifted to the point that my sister asked her, did you get your booty done? And she said, no. She said, yes, you did. Yes, you did. And my my sister came to me. She said, Sheree got her butt done, didn't she? I said, no, she didn't. And literally, she didn't. She was like, yes, she did. I'm not dumb. Ain't no way in the world because she was not built like that. I say, that is Dr. Jim. You trying to go to Dr. Columbia because you can't even afford Dr. Miami or Dr. New Jersey. You want to go to Columbia to a whole nother country to get on somebody's table you don't know what kind of medical devices they use and you don't even know this man got no med degree finna put you on that table and then you got to stay over there in the hotel and all for what all for who don't just say it's for you because it ain't just for you because if we just did stuff for us we'll everybody walk around naked when nobody be brushing no teeth they wouldn't have to make toothpaste two brushes but we doing stuff so we could be presentable to other people let's be all the way real about it so certain stuff is presentable to other people certain stuff is understandable it's okay it's hygienic hygienic however you say it 
But right now, a lot of stuff we getting out of control. Let me help y'all understand. And to my Caucasian ladies and to um, the other races of ladies who have thin lips and to the black women who have thin lips. Look, you have thin lips because it match your nose and it match your cheeks and it match your forehead. So we not even recognizing that you have thin lips. Only reason why we recognize you have thin lips is because not everybody getting their lips pumped up. So now it's a lot of y'all who have thin lips. Now you walk around with lips like mine. See, I got soup coolers, but the soup coolers match my nose. You see what I'm saying? If I had a little straighter nose, then I, my lips probably be thinner. And so a lot of y'all, hey, how you doing? How are you doing? It is great to meet you. It is great to meet you. Yeah, my name is Ashley. It's great to meet you. And also, what else do you want? And it's like, come on, why did you go and do that? Why you let these people make you? Okay, yes. Okay, yes. See, yes, black women is winning in certain industries, and you. So everybody listening to rap music. The rapper got this here woman. This here woman have some, her her genes is from an area, from a culture, from a lineage that they have thicker lips. So now because she being praised and she being put on a pedestal, everybody, every woman with thinner lips want to go get thicker lips. But that's not, that's not doing anything for you. Like if they said, listen, if you have thin lips, you're going to die early and thicker lips will add longer life and it'll help you cool your food better because if you don't, you're going to get tonsillitis. If you cannot warm your food down better with soup cooler, that's why they call big lips called soup cooler because you blowing on your soup like this. So if you don't, if you don't have the lips that could generate enough wind flow to cool your food down, the food is going to give you liverlitis, lycolitis, tonsillitis. So everybody with thin lips, scientifically, medically, need to go get thicker lips. If that was the case, okay. But if you're doing it because somebody that made you feel thin-lipped, Oh, girl, your lips so thin. You give me a paper cut. We kiss. Listen, don't don't go doing that to yourself for somebody else because of what they done said. Listen, them looks look like um, Bruce Bruce say it looks good on you. You see what I'm saying? Them lips look good on you. And so now you go see the door to destiny to unlock your destiny. That's your fingerprint. It's your fingerprint. It's the door scan your face because we got technology now. You standing at the door. The door. Nah, nah, access denied. Everything that God got for you on the other side, of, access denied. Access denied. Uh, Michael, the archangel, he come up. There, uh, yeah, you having trouble getting in? Yeah, I'm trying to get in, but I don't know why I can't get in. He said, let me check your records. He said, uh, did you do something to your lips? Because, he, he, cause see, this is the door to destiny. This over here on this side is what's for you. But you went and got somebody else's lips. So, unfortunately, unfortunately ain't nothing I can be able to do. But from what I've heard, because we had a few other people with the same problem. From what I heard, I believe that's collagen. And I believe it's naturally just going to dissipate. In about seven months, maybe 12 months. So when it dissipates, let's just leave it like that and then come on back and then we'll get you another face scan so you can get to what God got for you. Okay. Because see, God loved you. See, God made you. He made you for you. Okay. So now if it was something that, you know, was that went wrong, you know, and you had an accident, car accident, and you want to do some corrective, we understand that. Okay, but when you're going to do something for vanity because you saw this woman have it and you, you like the way her husband look and you like the way the men look who like in her picture, see, you did it for the wrong reason. So we're not going to be able to let you get through the door of destiny. Now, see, listen, this is very hard to understand. This is even harder for me to say. Every last person who watched this might unfollow me because a lot of times we want to hear stuff that tickle our fancy. We want to hear stuff. And then 
all, what we want, uh, I can do what I want to do. You absolutely right, but you got to sell what come with it. So if you walk around looking like Daffy the Duck, when God already created you and nothing was wrong with you, and then you go get, to, you go to Dr. Miami, yeah, can you give me the Daffy the Duck special? Well, really, what it, I want a long, yeah, I want a big booty, so it give me a duck waddle, and then I want duck lips. Just daffy the duck. Th thank you. So the Lord said, listen, your husband was looking for Jessica, the one that I made. Now, we we have factored in, this is what the Lord said, we factored in the gym. We factored in the dentist. We factored in the esthetician to do facials. We even factored in natural volume lashes. We did not factor in two, three booty sizes that was put in by Dr. Miami. We didn't factor that in. So I'm trying to send you your husband. I wanted you to get that job. I wanted you to get that movie role. I wanted you to get that endorsement deal. I wanted you to get that brand deal, but they was looking for you. You went and got some, the, somebody else special. They like, oh, this ain't who we was looking for. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, we had, and I had to do this too, because I wanted, I wanted to be a, I would like, I wanted to be able to speak proper and to come to you speaking very proper and be able to articulate and speak in a very proper way, sound like a news reporter, because I felt like my country accent was not good enough for you. See, I wanted to change. I wanted to sound like somebody else, but I had to realize, listen, I got a Southern accent. I got a country draw. I've had it since I was a child because of the way I learned how to talk. Being around my grandma in my formative years, she said her words with an accent. So I picked up how she talked. I copied her language, added a little bit more onto it. And so now, you know, it is what it is. So guess what? It's going to be people who judge me for my accent and say, oh, he sound dumb because they think a country is dumb. They think country is dumb. And then it's going to be people who say, you know, I like an accent because it's not pretentious and it sounds more relatable. So it's going to be people who overlook me. It's going to be opportunity that I don't get because they like he too country and we associate accents with low intelligence because if you read more, you're going to read words the way they are spelled and the way they are pronounced. And then you're going to pronounce them the way they should be pronounced. And you're going to say strawberry instead of strawberry. You're going to say back instead of bike. And so if you say bike instead of back, you're dumb because you do not read. If you say strawberry and street instead of strawberry and street, you're dumb. And so we don't want to put you on national television hollering by the strawberry when we're trying to help the people understand strawberry. When you get on TV and you say, stay off your back, we don't want everyone thinking that you're telling them to not ride their bike because you said stay off your bike, your bike. And so now, sir, we're going to have to give this job, even though he's from South Africa and this is America, we're going to have to give this job to Trevor Noah because he pronounces his words better than you, country bumpkin. Goodbye. You see what I'm saying? But then one day, it'll be some opportunity that say, hey, look, we're going to take you as you because we're trying to reach that demographic who maybe didn't read books just like you didn't read books and y'all just was hearing words and trying to repeat what y'all said so y'all keep hollering about amalams instead of ambulance because y'all have never read the word ambulance on a paper but you heard somebody say call the ambulance and then you trying to repeat it you say hey call the amalam it's amalam hey call the amalam and so, sir, we want to reach that demographic because guess what? They are having jobs. They are entrepreneurs. They do earn money. So we want you to come and speak their MLM's language. Here's your job. We'll pay you millions of dollars to have this TV show. Reach them for us so we can have these advertisements so they go buy what we tell them. Okay, there. Here you go. You see what I'm saying? It's stuff that you're going to miss. 
it's men and women that's going to look at you and say, oh, you look awkward. Oh, you look this. Oh, you look that. That's because those people are not for you. Because what you got to realize, even the job that you get, the customers that you get, the clients that you get, the viewers that you get, and whatever you do, somebody's choosing you. And whatever you do, somebody's choosing you. Unless you do something that it's like you're just doing computer coding. You're doing computer coding and people using your software. So you could look like anything in the world and people using your software. But guess what? If you're not an entrepreneur and you go to a company and you want to code for them, um, that person who's hiring you could have personal bias. And if they say, uh, you look, uh, uh, you look a little serial killerish. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking we'll call you, don't call us. You see what I mean? They judging you. That's not for you. When you go to the next door and you go to the other company and they say, hey, hmm, we love that you could do this type of work. And hey, your skills speak for itself. You're hired. That opportunity is for you. So you don't have to go change your whole face or your whole body to please somebody else if God made you for you. And for what is for you. So for so for those of you who have already done it, you know, hey, you know the reasons you've done it for. And hopefully it was for the right reasons. And even if it feels for the wrong reasons, God bless you. We we all do stuff that we some later we learn something different. And so we able to teach somebody, hey, say, hey, this is why I did this. Like I have tattoos under my shirt. I don't, I don't have them all the way down my arm, but I'm not going to get them because I had a different perspective on tattoos before I went all the way down my arm. So I'm going to tell my sons, like, why are you doing it? Like, what you want a tattoo for? Like, is it going to help you live longer? Is it going to make you look better? Is it going to make you healthier? Then what's, what's the point of doing it? Because, yeah, I got tattoos. Yeah, your mama got tattoos. It's because we were listening to rap music. We thought it make you cool, look cool. We thought it, you know, make you look more attractive to the opposite sex. And that's why we did it. But none of those things are true. So, because these permanent markings. And so, it's, it's, I made that mistake. Don't make that mistake. Like, if you're going to do it, make sure you're doing it because you really want to do it. And you're not doing it for the world around you. You're doing it because you say, hey, I love art. And I feel like my body is a canvas. And I'm so artistic that I want permanent murals on my body. If, if that ain't your energy, then you shouldn't be doing it. Get no tattoo. You know, and then, of course, you're going to have the holier, the holy rollers. What the Bible says in the Old Testament that, that you should make no markings of the dead. And you should have no permanent markings of the dead. And... That wasn't necessarily, that wasn't talking about a tattoo. That the, them people was taking cutting themselves with rocks to memorialize the dead, and they was doing all kind of stuff. That that they ain't talking about a tat. They ain't have a tattoo gun. You know what I mean? Now, yeah, they had some ink that they could put on your skin, but the, even that that's contextual and that's debatable on whether it was talking about what we do today as tattoos. But you got the whole other than thou that's going to interpret stuff how they want to interpret it. And so, and I thought of that too as a Christian. So when my first tattoo is John 8 and 7 that said, he who is without sin cast the first stone. I got that tattoo because I wanted to look sexy to women. And I thought tattoos make you look sexy because the R&B singers had tattoos. And uh, really it was Tyrese that I seen with tattoos and the ladies, they were loving him at that time. And I say, so he got tattoos. I need to give me some tattoos because my body built just like his. I got eight pack of abs, 12 pack of abs. I got a nice chest, nice arm. These ladies going crazy over him. Let me get some tattoos, see if these ladies are going to go crazy over me. But I was, I'm a Christian, so my first tattoo was to Christians to say, listen, if you without sin, cast the first stone. All right, then, shut up. Now I got my tattoo. That's, why I got, that's exactly why I did it. Now, when you hear that, how dumb do that sound? Absolutely crazy. But see, a lot of times we make excuses for why we do stuff and we lie and we say, oh, I did it for me and me only. And that's a lie. 
a lot of times we did we do stuff because someone else made us feel inadequate because peer pressure got to us because the world got to us and then the world wants you to go overboard the world wants you to have no self-esteem no identity because when you don't have true self-esteem and true confidence and when you don't know who you are that's when you are susceptible to be taken advantage of that's why people come to me and say oh you're taking advantage of gullible women because that's what they assume because they assume that i want to that i'm giving you game that's going to keep you lost and keep you dumb they don't take the time to hear my message to understand that i'm actually take telling you stuff that's going to make you stronger that's going to make you wiser that's going to boost your self-confidence so that you love yourself more and that I do not care if you outgrow me because some certain message are se is seasonal. Now, I may have certain message that could, that it'll be good for you in season and out of season, but certain messages you're not going to need. That's why I see some women, they say, OK, Tony, can you not do so much relationship stuff and do some stuff on business? It's because they've grown beyond the relationship stuff. And so now they're saying, hey, you know, I appreciate your, your intellect, your insight, your wisdom. Can you give me some wisdom on business? That's why I do Small Business Saturday. Hey, Tony, I done got a lot for me, but I want the man who I'm going to meet to be prepared, and he might bump into your page. Can you do something for men? That's why I talk to the men on Fridays. You say, oh, I did this week on Thursday and Wednesday. But you see what I'm saying? So they don't take the time because they know if you broke, busted, and disgusted, then you're vulnerable, and money could be made off of you. But see, what, what I kind of do is to empower you and uplift you and i don't need you to stay like people say i don't i've heard people say i don't want to be a life coach because i don't want my income to be dependent upon somebody else's brokenness or somebody else somebody's life like i don't want to be lying to them just so they keep paying me and that's a bad life coach that's not the goal of a life coach a life coach is the goal is to graduate you the goal is to where if you have four to twelve sessions is like teaching you how to ride a bike. You don't have to keep coming to bike riding lessons once you to learn how to ride the bike. Now, yeah, when you get a flat tire, you may need to come back to the instructors to learn how to do a, how to fix a flat tire. When your handlebars are not aligned, you may need to come back to the shop to get the handlebars aligned. When it's time for a new bike, you might come back to the shop to get a new bike. But you already know how to ride a bike. Now you can go on about your business and you just coming in for checkups. You just coming in just for a little tune ups. You just coming in, you know, to join the bike club, you know, to do the group coaching. But you already good. Like you healthy, you whole, and you just checking in, you checking up. But coaching really for that season where you really trying to grow, you really trying to press through. So that might be four sessions, it might be 12 sessions, it might be 18 sessions. But it ain't, it's not intended for it to be the rest of your life every month for the rest of your life. It's intended for you to get what you need to get. You get your way. Now you go on about your way. And then when new situations arise that you haven't confronted yet, then you can pop back in and get your little checkup. But it ain't just to be a crutch. A lot of people don't understand what life coaching is. And so here's the thing. The world, secularism, wants you to have low self-esteem because it's more money to be made so if you feel like these clothes gonna define you and you're just gonna go broke on clothes if you feel like vanity defines you and gonna make you you're gonna go broke on vanity but when you know who you are and you're confident in yourself you do what you want to do you do what's reasonable for you so yes it could be to present yourself so that you look presentable to the world to other people but you know, let me do this in moderation, not from a place of insecurity. Let me go get these lashes from a place of self-love and confidence, not from a place of low self-esteem and insecurity. Because if you go do anything from a place of low self-esteem and insecurity, you're going to do too much because you're overcompensating. So that's why you'll see some women when they go get their booty done, it's not just the biggest their butt could be to fit their body it's the biggest but that that doctor was willing to do and so it's like here you got this this woman who was 120 and now she go get a butt of a woman that's that's naturally 175 instead of getting the butt of a very fit 120 or she go get the butt of a woman that is 200 
naturally 200. Hey, I'm 120 pounds. Give me the booty of a woman that's 200 pounds, but put it on my 120 waist. That don't go together. You finna have complications. You might not wake up from that procedure. You see what I'm saying? Because you went in from with insecurity. You went in not from a place of confidence and a conscious decision. You went in from a insecure state of mind. From a low self-esteem state of mind. And you went in without first doing everything you can to do the work naturally. So this is what I'm trying to get y'all to understand. It's hard to discuss. And listen, this is not, if you get to this point, hopefully, you see an idiot in the comments, please let them know. Listen, you're an idiot. This video is not to bash anybody. It's not to pick on anybody. It's, it's, it's to uplift and to empower to let you know, listen, you are enough. You are enough. Like, do what you could do naturally to be the best that you could be and know that you are enough. Like, every woman that I see go get their lips done look better with their natural lips than the lips that got done. Very rarely does a woman look better with her lips done. The only time she look better with her lips done is if she went and she did it natural. She said, look, give me a natural look. Give me the look that would be the best natural look for my nose, my face. So it might be this. It might be a third of a vowel instead of the whole vowel. You know, I don't even know how to spell that word or what the word is, but I'm talking about the little syringe they use or whatever they use. It might be a third of it instead of the whole thing. And then, you know, and then what happened is the lips swell. It to be too big. Then the swelling go down a little bit and the woman think it's perfect, but then it keep going down. Then she's like, oh man, I was perfect two days ago and not today. So let me go get a little bit more. So hopefully when it go all the way down, It'll be right where I want it. And then the next thing you know, the woman get more and more and more and more and more. And next thing you know, she got somebody whole face, somebody else whole face. And people don't even wrap it. Uh, Lindsay, is that you? Is that you? Oh, okay. I, well, I have a friend. I have a friend, Bianca, and uh, her lips are like yours. And I know your lips were not like that. So when I saw you, I was like, is this Lindsay? this Bianca so it just kind of confused me for a quick second but oh, great to meet great to see you Lindsay oh, okay all right yeah so uh yeah so so yeah tell me about this you know where's you know what's going on oh okay oh, okay oh okay okay oh okay oh okay yeah 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 she your friend can't even talk to you because she like, what in the world did you do? Why did you do that? Now, she might not be doing it, not necessarily because she's confident. She might not be doing it because it's costly. And she waiting on her stimulus check. She waiting on her tax return so she can go get her done. But she's just going to say, listen, do not do it like you did, Lindsay. I do not like Lindsay. She don't understand how she looking. Thank you. Just I want a little, little better to drop than hers. Okay, thank you. You see what I'm saying? So the thing is, is like, as a man, I be looking and I be feeling sorry and I be like, do this person got a brother? Do they have a dad? Like, do they have, do they have a boyfriend, husband, just to tell them like, listen, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You say you're doing it for yourself, but where is the barometer where's the measuring stick if you're doing it for yourself where where did you get this reference from if you're doing it for yourself because if you're doing it for you you don't have that reference you don't have you, you know nowhere in just your natural thoughts did did it say lips three times the, the size of your natural lips is is the look for you a butt three times the size of your natural butt is the look for you like that had to come that had to be external influence so you got to recognize and realize that and then understand that now you living for other people and you letting other people dictate your life. Like love you, love you, enhance you naturally. You know, you want thicker lips, put some ice on your lips and they'll, you, they'll feel numb so they'll feel bigger. You know, you just sit there and just, mm, 
Just thump yourself ten times. It'll, it'll, you know, they got, they got little lip stuff now that kind of activate the histamines in your lip, and it'll kind of give it a little plump. It just activate the, 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 the cells in your lip, and it just get it going, get it firing, boo, 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 and then you get a little bit of plump versus having to go get shot all up. Same thing with your booty. They got a little cream you could put on. It might just activate something. Just get and get your little workout in. Get some squats in. You see what I mean? Like, I just want y'all to love y'all and, and just, I want you to love you and stop letting the world tell you what's beautiful. And you look in the mirror and you determine what's beautiful for you and you know that and, and realize that God didn't make no mistake with you. And that it's stuff at your disposal, like a gym, like a dentist. You know, like a toothbrush, like some lip gloss, you know, like some gel, some hair gel, like a like a crimp, a, a eyelash clamp, crimp thing, like some mascara. It's stuff at your disposal that you can enhance you without having to go do too much. Now, yes, you could go to the estheticians and all of this into the car, but go in there and say listen i'm just trying to enhance me not be somebody else i ain't trying to be somebody else i ain't trying to look like such and such and i've been hearing that that personal trainers they've been saying like listen the worst thing you could come in here and say is i want my body to look like such and such instead of saying i want to be the best version of me because your abs you can't get i can't get cristiano ronaldo abs because our body build is totally different so when I send that picture to my trainer, hey, I want my ass to be like this. I'm like, hey, I can't do that because y'all ain't built the same. Your torso ain't his torso. Your abdomen ain't like his abdomen. Y'all got different genes. You you African, he European. You see what I mean? So it's like be the best version of you. You're European. You is not supposed to have African lips. You African, you African, but you African from this from this region. That's why your lips like this. You African, but you from this region. That's why your lips like this. You your skin is pale because you from this region of the world. Your skin is dark because you from this region. So you dark. You don't need lightning cream because that's your skin color from your region for your body type for your DNA. Your skin is pale, paler, lighter, fairer, whatever you want to call the word. And pale is not a derogatory term. You know, that's a that's a word. That's a word with a definition. So your skin is that because of where the region your ancestors are from. Pale means light in color or having little color, little color. Somebody going to have more melanin because they're from a different region of the world so what we have to do is say listen what can i do for me you see what i mean what can i do for me that enhances me so if if you say hey i have pale skin guess what god made a sun so get enough sun for you too much sun could turn into something that's not advantageous that's unhealthy but you get enough skin for you, so what your skin gonna do is it's gonna become the richest, most vibrant color of your genetic makeup. But if you go and you do artificial darkening too much, that now can start to do something totally different to your skin cells that 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, it costs you something. And you're like, wow. And that's because you were caught up and not realizing that this fair skin or pale skin with red freckles could be the most beautiful being on earth. But if that person goes surgically, remove their freckles and go darken their skin, now they become a copy of another genetic makeup instead of being the best original of themselves this dark rich black skin is unique and it's yours and that 
dark skin could be the most beautiful canvas of a human that eyes have ever laid sight on. But because everybody, majority of other people are lighter skin, you start to feel bad about yourself. But the world said, no, you unique. It, you just was in the wrong city that day. You was in the wrong town that day. It was the wrong age. We was waiting on you to get 18 so that you could travel around the globe and you finna make $40 million a year with that beautiful dark skin. You see what I mean? Love you. Love you. Stop making the world, stop letting the world make you feel less than and inadequate. Like you got to change everything about you for somebody else. Hey, God bless you. This is Tony Gaskins. We'll be in touch.